Okay, and um, Aaron, have you uh, been able to track if we have all the members on? I believe, let me just check the last few people that came in in bulk, but I believe that I'm just missing two, but we've got people still popping into the waiting room. Let me make sure I didn't. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's give, let's give it another minute um, to make sure people can get on okay. It looks like we're just missing one currently, but it, it is just now 102. Let's see here. Okay. Making sure no one's logged in under a phone number or anything. Oh, and our last uh, member is joining right now out of the waiting room. Excellent. It looks like the waiting room is cleared. Great, thank you. Uh, so uh, again, uh, for those who might have just joined, my name is Veronica Judy Cecil. I'm the Senior Deputy Commissioner here at Medicaid. We'd like to welcome everybody to this brand new Technical Advisory Committee. Um, we're excited to, uh, th this is uh, our absolute newest TAC, um, and that's what we call uh, our Technical Advisory Committee's TACs. And uh, so I'd like to welcome everybody. I think for this very first meeting, uh, what might be helpful is that we, um, Aaron, if you don't mind, and I, I didn't give you a heads up, so I apologize, but if you could call out uh, a member and then why don't, if you don't mind um, for the member, the representative, if you could just give us your name and who you're representing um, and maybe just a, a very, very brief, um, let us, you know, let us know who you are, uh, would be great. So, uh, Aaron, do you want to start with first name? Kevin Callahan. Yes, good afternoon. I'm uh, representing uh, the Kentucky uh, Aeromedical Association, or, or Kentucky Ames, Kentucky Aeromedical Services. I uh, have a uh, background in uh, aeromedical, about 16 years, over 25 years in EMS period. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Keith Smith. Hi there. My name is Keith Smith. I'm with the Kentucky Board of EMS. I'm also um, System EMS Director with Baptist Healthcare. And I've got about 37 years of EMS experience. Great. Welcome, Keith. Linda Basham. Yes, I've been with um, EMS working with billing since 1984. Um, I'm my own billing company started in 99. Great. Dana Evans. Hi, Linda. Oops, sorry. Yes, I'm Dana Evans. I am with Ambulance Medical Billing. I've been in revenue cycle management for about 33 years and um, with AMB for 26 and about the last 12 of those um, strictly dealing with EMS. Welcome. Troy Walker. Yes, my name is Troy Walker. I represent Ground Ambulances for the Kentucky Ambulance Providers Association. I served as president of CAPA for the last five years. My term's up in December of this year. I've been in EMS about 32 years. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Troy. Joe Pruitt. Yes, um, I'm a member of Kentucky Ambulance Providers and serving in that capacity on this uh, type committee. I've um, been in uh, EMS for now 45 years, served, uh, passed on the Kentucky Board of EMS. Hi, Joe. You, uh, 45 years, that can't be. <laughs> you, you don't look old enough for 45 years. <laughs> well, I, I started to say that I was just uh, got in the career in 1976, but I wanted to show Troy <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's great. 
and You'll last but not 30. least. <laughs> last but not least, Jacob Carroll. Hello, everyone. I'm Jacob Carroll. I represent the Kentucky Association of Fire Chiefs. I'm Assistant Chief of EMS for Jefferson County Fire Department. Uh, I've been in EMS for about 16 years. Hi, Jacob. Um, so we wanted to take a moment. I don't know. Um, Commissioner Lisa Lee is unable to be on today. Normally, she would want to attend a, a first hack, but um, I would like for those um, Medicaid staff, if you all could please introduce yourself, that would be great. Um, I will here. I will do my best to. I can go first if you'd like while you look. Yeah, that'd be great, Erin. Uh, my name is Erin Vickers. I will be help coordinating all of your meetings. Uh, we have been emailing back and forth. Um, so I am here to help assist you guys in your meetings and your agendas. I'd like to take a quick moment and thank Troy for helping me pull all the members together so quickly for this new TAC. Want me to go next, Veronica? Yeah, go ahead. Steve Bechtel, I'm the Chief Financial Officer here in the Department of Medicaid. Uh, been uh, with the Department of Medicaid for going on 21 years now. Uh, so, and and been working with uh, Joe and and Jim Duke on uh, a lot of the uh, supplemental program that we've, we've uh, implemented with you guys. So. Angie? Good afternoon. I am Angie Parker. I'm the Director of Quality and Population Health. Nice to meet you all. Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer Dudinsky. I'm the Director of the Division of Program Integrity. Um, Program Integrity houses several different areas. We do provider enrollment, um, recertifications. We also have third-party liability, estate recovery, and the KI HIP program. And then we also deal with fraud, waste, and abuse. Um, so we have um, a group that does reviews, audits, um, investigations, and then we also do recovery. Great. Uh, Leanna? Hi, yes, thank you. Uh, Leanna Trainer, I'm the Assistant Director in the Division for Quality and Population Now. Beth? Hi, I'm Beth Fisher. I'm a Staff Assistant with the Department for Medicaid Services, and I assist with all of the department's communications needs. Thank you. Dr. Terrio? Hello, I'm Judy Terrio. I'm a um, pediatrician by training, and I've been with Medicaid a little bit more than three years, and I'm a medical director, so it's great to be here. Amy? Hello, my name is Amy Richardson. I'm the director of fiscal management here in the department, and I'm heavily involved in the directed and supplemental payment programs for the ambulance providers. Thank you, and Jonathan? Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Scott. I'm uh, the uh, regulatory and legislative advisor. Uh, so I I, um, I was uh, there and 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 helping when uh, uh, House Bill Eight passed. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, happy to be here and uh, look look forward to the discussion. Uh, Leanne. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Leanne Fitzpatrick, and I'm a behavioral health specialist within the department. I've been here almost five years. Okay, so I've done my best to try to click through. If I missed anybody, I'm so sorry, but if any other Medicaid staff that are on. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> well, um, so uh, we wanted to go through being the first time for this TAC to meet a, a couple of things. Um, one, I, I do believe Aaron sent you all the bylaws that uh, we currently operate under. Those are bylaws that were created by the MAC and voted on by the MAC, which is uh, the Medicaid Advisory Council. Um, that's, that's what we call the MAC. And um, it is the overarching, um, each state by federal law is required to have some type of advisory council for medical assistance. So uh, 
Yeah. My meeting has started. And I can't breathe. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, so we have our Mac and then we have various texts. So uh, you'll hear us say those two things quite often. Um, Medicaid is huge on acronyms. So I apologize anytime we use one. Uh, let us know uh, if you don't know what it is. Um, please stop us because we're we're terrible about uh, using using those acronyms. So don't hesitate to ask a question if we use one um, without identifying it. The meeting cadence and what we're um, uh, th this is up to you all. Um, most of the tax and I should say the majority of the tax. Um, do try to meet um, every other month, and they generally meet the month that the MAC doesn't meet. So that would be six meetings a year. Um, I think Aaron ha is uh, working with you all to set up what your uh, meeting cadence for next year is. Um, some MACs don't, so some tax don't meet that much. Um, you know, it just depends on uh, this, what, what you all want, the content of the agenda. Um, and, you know, you all, you all control that. So, um, you know, if you all want to meet differently, that's something that you all can come together and, and make a decision. We always do try to work with each of the tags and the Mac, um, because there are so many, I think there's now, uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe 16, 16. <laughs> 16 tags uh, that we administer. So um, that's a lot of meetings, which means that uh, <laughs> and we, we do try to have as much uh, participation from Medicaid, Medicaid staff on those meetings as possible. Um, so that, you know, that can be challenging when scheduling, but, um, you know, we do our best to try to do it at your convenience um, uh, along with ours. Uh, you all will need to elect a chair and a co-chair, um, and I believe that what that is what we'll do at the first at the top of the next meeting. Um, if you are interested in either of those positions, what we ask you to do is to email Erin and let her know of your interest, and then we'll open it up. Um, we recommend co-chairs because, um, you know, you all have your day-to-day -day life going on and we know that you're volunteering for this position and we are grateful for that. We're grateful for your participation. Um, but that way, you know, you do have somebody helping you um, uh, with those duties and responsibilities. It is up to the chair to determine the agenda and to develop the agenda. And then that gets sent to Aaron, um, who will get it out to the distribution list, to the, the rest of the members, um, to, to the DMS staff, the Medicaid staff. Um, so uh, that's kind of the primary responsibility for the chair and then to oversee the meeting, uh, to conduct the meeting and to, um, to also, um, you know, ask for recommendations and to ensure that if recommendations are made, that those get sent over to um, to to the MAC and to the um, and to Medicaid, so that we can follow up on those recommendations. So those are the primary duties of the chair um, and co-chair. So again, if you're interested in that position, if you can. I'll let Aaron know, and uh, we'll do that at the top of the next meeting so the chair can take over. Um, we're here to support you all, so I don't think that um, if you're a little hesitant to take that position that you're out on your own, we'll certainly do our best to, to um, help you through what, what you need to do um, as part of that, and we're here to answer questions, um, so you're, we're not, um, you're not, you're not on your own. I mentioned the bylaws. Again, we really uh, try our best to adhere to those. And um, so it's really important to understand them. Um, it, it helps with the flow of the meeting and the process, uh, how meetings are to be conducted, how recommendations are to be made. Um, if you have any questions about those, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to provide clarification or answer any questions about that. I mentioned recommendations. So um, this varies for, from tack to tack. 
Um, you know, recommendations are basically uh, something that you want the Department for Medicaid Services to consider uh, implementing. And, um, uh, you know, I think it's hard sometimes for the tax to understand there are things outside of our control. So this is a Medicaid tax. We only have control over Medicaid. Um, and so, um, you know, anytime that you're interested in doing things outside of med Medicaid, we absolutely could um, make a request to have somebody, a representative from whatever agency might be involved in that to come present. But um, you know, this, is, this is about Medicaid. So if you all have uh, a particular recommendation that you want Medicaid to consider, that's the process. So you'd make the recommendation in the TAC meeting, it gets voted on, um, uh, only a recommendation that's voted on by a quorum uh, can go on and that gets presented to the MAC at its next meeting. And then um, once that process happens, uh, Medicaid then can officially consider that request and we will respond within 45 days. Uh, don't, so let me say, don't feel obligated to make recommendations. Some tax do and some tax don't. Uh, and it just really kind of depends on, you know, what is what it is you're interested in. And then um, the other is reports. So the chair will um, attend the MAC meeting and do a report out to the MAC about what happened at the TAC, including any recommendations. Um, so um, uh, the other thing that you all can ask for is data from, from Medicaid. So if you're interested in, um, you know, how, how many providers are enrolled, EMS providers are enrolled, or, you know, th those kinds of data requests, um, you're welcome to make those uh, requests to us as well. So that's a that's kind of a high level of sort of how um, the TAC operates. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. All right. Um, so we uh, we did think that even without a chair, you know, we wanted to open up the floor um, for any general discussion. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the representatives, if the members of the TAC want to uh, talk about things they're interested in, um, if you have any questions of Medicaid at this time. Uh, going forward, what we'll do and, and what the chair will do is there'll be an old business and a new business section on every agenda. So the old business is obviously uh, following up on um, questions or, or discussion that was in a previous TAC meeting. Um, and so those, those are the times that we generally come back. If you've asked Medicaid something, we'll generally come back and, and talk about those. Um, the new business, uh, you know, are new things that we've not talked about. And um, even though it's on the agenda, that's the opportunity for the TAC members to talk to either among themselves or to ask Medicaid something um, that doesn't necessarily mean that Medicaid will be prepared to address that particular issue at that time. We, we really try, we look at the agendas ahead of time and we try to be prepared um, when there are new business items, but um, we don't, we're not always quite prepared. So that'll get moved into old business in the next meeting, but um, just to kind of talk through what that looks like, but happy to open up. Um, oh, I do want to say, so for quorum, um, you do have to be able to show your video um, when you're conducting business. So when you're voting on anything, you do have to show your video um, for voting. I just wanted to, to clarify that. But uh, at this time, I'll just open up the floor. And if there's any of the TAC members that want to make any comments or have any questions. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I uh, did want to note, I apologize, and, and um, maybe after the general discussion, the managed care organizations do attend our meetings. Uh, we generally do request that there's a representative from each managed care organization. So we have six um, in attendance. So you can ask questions of them as well. That's very appropriate for um, for you all to um, you know request information from them. 
and to have them present on particular topics or issues um, in the TAC as well. So I'll, I'll open that up. So I'm being very quiet. It is a talkative group, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> That was going to be my question if we had was over the uh, the the max. So not the max. I'm sorry, but the Medicaid as long as the MCOs. So that's that. You just answered my question. I was fixing to ask. So. Oh, great. Okay. Excellent. I can. Um, why don't I see? I. I I know I saw a couple of the MCOs, but let me go through and if there's an MCO representative on um, and you know you're gonna be the designated rep for this TAC, I guess let us know. But um, let's, we'll just start with the A, <laughs> Etna. Is anybody from Etna on? Oh, hey, good morning. It's Joanne Marston. Um, I'm the director of network here at Etna. And it's, um, I'm also with me is Crystal Reisner. <laughs> Um, she's a senior senior network manager, and one or either of us, both of us, will be here typically. So, if you have any questions, we're happy to. Have. Thanks, Joanne. Let's go to Anthem. I, I'm not. Uh, Dan Brunner. Go, go ahead, ahead Sean. Dan. You go first. All right, Dan. Uh, Dan Brunner, medical director at Anthem. I'm a ER doctor by trade, and practice in Northern Kentucky for over 20 years. Um, I plan to attend regularly. And uh, Sean? Hi, I'm Sean Collins, Chief of Staff for Anthem Medicaid of Kentucky. So uh, nice to meet everyone. And I'll just put in a, a quick plug. Uh, if anyone ever has any questions or, or concerns, please don't wait till, till a, uh, our TAC meeting here. Uh, feel free to reach out to Dan and, or I uh, through email. Uh, Angie has our emails. Veronica has our emails as well. And we'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions that you guys have. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Thank you all. Humana. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Majid Habami. I'm providing network operations lead for the Kentucky uh, Medicaid line of business. I've been with Humana collectively for over 22 years, and I will be uh, attending this uh, TAC uh, call going forward. So, thank you. Uh, Passport by Melina. Yes, this is Henry Spalding. I'm the ancillary provider rep for Passport uh, by Molina Healthcare. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, and this is Dr. Tom James. I'm the chief medical officer, uh, and I'll be available as much as I can. Thank you, Dr. James. All right, uh, well care. My name is Christine Lobster. I have... Um... I'm from WellCare, and I've got experience in a lot of different aspects in healthcare. And we absolutely want you to reach out if you have any questions or concerns prior to these meetings, but we can also address whatever you need during these meetings. Great. Thanks, Christine. And United. Hello, this is Dr. Canner. I'm the Chief Medical Officer with United Healthcare. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute fast enough. I am an OBGYN by background and have lots of emergency room <laughs> visits under my belt from that perspective. Uh, like the other MCOs, if there's a question or a problem or concern, please reach out to me. I can put my email in the chat and let us help you before it gets any further than necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panther. So those are our MCOs. I'll uh, open the floor back up because um, we didn't have any other agenda items. Hey, Veronica, it's uh, Keith Smith. Uh, one thing that I would like to just throw out and just get people to start thinking about until we have our next meeting and have a chance to come up with a chair and co-chair. Um, there are a couple things that are really pressing in the EMS uh, side of um, emergency medicine. Uh, one is uh, psychiatric transfers, which I believe the uh, director of Medicaid uh, addressed during the uh, EMS task force um, meeting that occurred last week in, in Frankfurt. 
that we really need to get some solid work done on um, because there is just so much, um, for lack of a better word, cantankerous uh, going back and forth between the law enforcement community on um, you know, who needs to be doing those transports, who is most suited for doing those transports. And again, as much as I hate to say it, who's going to get and how are people going to get reimbursed for doing those transfers? And is it really medically appropriate to be tying up an ambulance on a potential psychiatric transfer where the patient has not done any harm to themselves and seems to be at low risk? So I just like to get that out there as a, a thought for people to start thinking about, because uh, I really do think this is a, a big topic that we need to get addressed uh, for the entire state from an EMS perspective, um, because it, it is a seemingly bigger and bigger issue as we go forward. Absolutely, thank you, Keith. Um, I will say that Dr. Sheila Schuster, who is the chair of the Behavioral Health TAC, um, has been talking about that and has had that on her agenda. Um, and I know uh, beyond the actual TAC, meeting and discussion that that there are, are some um, other movements around that. Um, so uh, certainly if that is something that you all want us to come more prepared on, um, we can put that on the next, uh, go ahead and put that on the next TAC agenda. Uh, so we'll, so we can make sure that we have folks attending that can speak a little more towards it. Sure, that would be great. You know, obviously there are okay. some things that would have to be done on the, the EMS level as far and working with the state, both um, through Department of Transportation and K-Beams to, to find out what would be allowable and what's not allowable. But there's there's been some, some forward thinking on this as far as, you know, instead of potentially using an ambulance to move someone that is is not really medically necessary to be in an ambulance, you know, could um, secure vans be used, not necessarily to where somebody would feel like they're uh, a captive in any way, but yet it's not an ambulance that's being tied up where uh, it needs to be held back for a 911 purpose. So there's a lot of, of working parts that we need to, to work with on this. But uh, again, just planting the seed that uh, this is something that I, I think the EMS community as a whole uh, would like to see us get addressed in, in a fairly um, efficient time manner. All right, sounds good. Thanks for bringing it up. Uh -huh. Veronica, Dr. Go. oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, this is Dr. Kanner with UHC. I was wondering about the impact that 988 can make on this. Dialing 988 instead of 911. Um, from, from my perspective, and this is Keith again, um, I really don't know enough about what, what gets um, discussed when you call 988. I think that any time that um, a call can be better screened to determine what is the most appropriate uh, form of treatment for the patient, that's going to be a move in the right direction. Um, but really, I need to learn more about 988 before I could really comment one way or the other. Yeah, and I think, I think the real uh, challenge has been that a person gets, um, you know, there's an emergency and you all take that person to the hospital. And it's at that point that um, the person's determined that is more appropriate for maybe a psychiatric hospital. And um, so they've gone to acute and they need to go to a psychiatric and, and uh, the utilization of uh, an appropriate transport um, to, to move that person over, um, I understand is, is, uh, is a big issue. And, um, because a person, you know, by Medicaid standards, it's no longer an emergency. Um, so we're trying to, how do we fill that gap? And I know there's a lot of conversation going on, like I said, ar around that. Um, I've not been directly involved in it, but um, certainly, you know, we can try to uh, have a little bit more or more robust discussion about it at the, at the next meeting. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, a right. uh, couple other items we may want to put on the agenda coming out of the task force that's uh, been meeting on EMS since uh, last year's legislative process. And Steve can probably talk to this a little more, but we may want to discuss 
Um, there's some talk of uh, expanding House Bill 8 a little bit for non-emergency uh, transports and or treat release um, transports. So that may be something that falls on, on this committee uh, to discuss and make some recommendation on. Not sure, Steve, you, you think that's in order? Sure, yeah, that, that's, that's worth, uh, let me turn my video back on. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's uh, something like this committee can discuss, uh, certainly. And you're talking about the treatment in place type of thing and uh, the things that we're exploring on that um, with yeah. looking at Indiana uh, as a model. Is that what you're referring right. to, Joe? Yep. Right. Okay. right. Yep. okay. Anyone else? I'm going to have to throw in there. I think uh, just from hearing from members of CAPA and different things, uh, something with pre-authorizations for ambulance transports, especially out of the emergency rooms is something we need to look at. Uh, more consistency and uh, some rules on that would help a lot of ambulance services throughout the state. Anyone else? Uh, just as Keith again, I'll, I'll second what Troy just said. The uh, the pre search that we're having to do on top of the PCS forms we already have to do uh, is creating, uh, in some cases or in a lot of cases, a barrier um, for our services to be able to claim reimbursement for run simply because they didn't have access to an ICD-10 code because that's something that's usually embedded in the patient's hospital record that our EMS providers simply don't have access to. And many of the, the discharging folks at the hospital, when they sign the PCS form, uh, they, they don't simply look, think to look to, to find what an ICD-10 code is because it's not something that um, is typically given out to an EMS provider. So uh, to Troy's point, this, this is something that definitely needs to be uh, examined a little deeper as well. Okay. Veronica, I was also going to say um, early on, and I think Joe, you can attest to this, is when we started talking about House Bill 8 and uh, the supplemental program for the ambulance providers, uh, that we also, uh, our secretary, Secretary Friedlander, wanted us to look into uh, kind of similar to what, Keith, you were talking about the mental health or the, um, the behavioral health type of transports. Um, we, we looked at a CAHOOTS model out of Eugene, Oregon as well as the STARS program in Dallas, Texas. And we was trying to figure out how we can implement that uh, throughout the EMS program. Um, so um, just wanted to pull those two out there and mention those two to you guys, because it's it's still hot and heavy on our agenda uh, to try to figure out how to implement a similar process. And that's where you talk about having, um, you know, you may have a EMT or a technician or something in the ambulance, but they don't know how to necessarily address uh, those who are going through behavioral health issues. Uh, and so there's always a, a way to have maybe someone who has more experience to, to be a rider in that, in that uh, van or ambulance or whatever the, the mode of transportation is that may have more of a clinical or more of a professional experience uh, with treating those those types of behaviors, so uh, that that's what the the cahoots and what the uh, uh, stars program uh, looks at. Um, so we was trying to do something similar here in Kentucky. So. Well, Veronica, I think we've got our agenda all set out for the next meeting. <laughs> Sounds like it. We may we may be uh, following up with you all to make sure we're getting it um, worded correctly, um, and that you guys feel comfortable with. Ha those are those are actually three really big. I think I third heard three uh, really big topics. I don't know if you all want to take them all on at, at your uh, next meeting, but um, we'll we'll communicate with you all on. Um, making sure, like I said, the wording, we've got the wording right. 
Veronica, I'm taking notes. I can get that typed up, sent over to the committee to to revise and and adjust as needed. Thank you, Erin. That's that's fantastic. Veronica, do we have to uh, vote to approve the bylaws on this meeting, or do we wait to the next meeting? You you don't have to approve the bylaws at all. They, the the MAC approved the bylaws, and those are the bylaws that um, govern the MAC and tax. Okay. All right. Good. Veronica, I was going to mention too, we could have DBH to come in and do a presentation of their uh, just initiated 988 process. Maybe folks would like to hear about that as well in the near future. Oh, yeah, and uh, Leslie, uh, I don't think you were on when we were doing introductions. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh. I was on the phone. Did you not hear me? I'm sorry. Uh, so Leslie oh. Hoffman, Deputy Commissioner for Department of Medicaid Services. I apologize. I thought you did hear me. Well, I, I was the last one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're, uh, I just wanted to mention too, we're working on several initiatives that you've mentioned today. So, and uh, also in conversations with CMS. So I uh, don't feel like we're not uh, hearing the cry for, for help. So we are working on uh, several initiatives related, uh, related to transportation right now. And anybody else? No. Um, so the next MAC meeting is November 17th. And uh, though you do not have a chair, uh, is there someone who might be willing to volunteer to attend? And um, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, if you're not if you're not there, we'll just let the MAC know. But if there's somebody who can attend um, and would just like to give a very very brief update on how the you know the meeting went today or first meeting, um, that would be welcomed. But again, you know don't don't feel like you have to since we don't have a chair yet. Veronica, since Troy uh, kind of ramrodded getting this all together, I, I think if, if he can, I'm speaking for you, Troy, but you might be the representative for us for that meeting. Joe, I appreciate that. I'd be honored to, but the only problem is my son-in-law graduates the State Police Academy that day, and I'll be at his ceremony. That's a really good excuse. <laughs> yeah, that works. Um, I, I, can, I can do that if someone else doesn't want to. I'd be glad to do that then. Like I said, I mean, if, if there were, we know that's not, has not been on your radar. So if it's a problem, if, you know, Aaron generally will let the MAC know when somebody, when a TAC can't be represented. Um, and certainly we can let them know that a chair hasn't been elected yet. Uh, but Joey, I mean, it's up to you. If you'd like to attend and provide that update, you're welcome to. I'll be glad to. Okay, excellent. All right, then the next meeting is uh, December 19th from two to four. And um, just so you know, we do, as Aaron mentioned, we do record these and we have uh, a YouTube site that has all of our MAC and TAC meetings on it. If you're curious uh, and wanna go see what a, Joe, if you wanna go see what a MAC meeting looks like, um, certainly you're welcome to go check those out. Um, they, the video generally gets updated within, you know, a couple of days, uh, within definitely seven business days. Uh, and, um, um, you know, we'll just uh, have that available to share uh, for folks. So um, if there's no other discussion or items, then um, we will adjourn. Veronica, one thing, what's the name yeah. of the YouTube channel? What's um, the name of the channel? It is, uh, Aaron, do you have any chance with the link? That you I can, can email the link out to the committee. I believe it's the Kentucky Medicaid YouTube. 
is it possible for you to email out everybody's contacts that's on this committee, just or especially the uh, the Medicaid everybody, so we just get to know you and have that uh, ability to email you and ask questions. I think that would be excellent. Absolutely, I have a list of directors and their um, email contacts I can send you. I can also re send the bylaws out, Linda. I saw that in the chat. The la I think the last email I sent you had a ton of information in it, so I apologize. So I'll re um, email those out as well. Thanks, Aaron. All right. If there's nothing else. We'll call it a day. And thank you all. We look forward to working with you. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Everybody, have a great afternoon. Thank you.